Welcome back. This is now question number four from the Pure Mathematics P1 International A-Level Edexcel um, <clears throat> paper from June 2020. A question here about simultaneous equations. And here we have a, a pair, pair of simultaneous equations. One of them is a linear equation. The other one looks like it's the equation of a circle. And we have to find um, the solution to this pair of equations. So first of all, in order to do such a thing, what we need to do is take one of the equations and substitute it into the other equation. So if, of course it's normally easier to take the linear equation and substitute it into the quadratic equation and it's also easier to take the letter which does not have a coefficient except one, for example here the y, and make that the subject of this. So I'm, I'm going to make y the subject in which case I have to add 3x to both sides, so I'll get 3x plus 4, or 4 plus 3x doesn't make a difference. And I can now take that that value of y, y equals 3x plus 4, that expression that represents y, and substitute it into the other equation, and that will give me the solution um, the of these two equations. That will give me the value of, basically, when I substitute instead of y, 3x plus 4, it will give me an equation with just x's in it, and when I solve the equation, it will tell me the values of x for which, um, which satisfy both of these equations, and then I also need to find the values of y as well in the end. So now, first of all, um, I'm going to take my equation 2, which is x squared plus y squared. Instead of y, I'm going to replace it with 3x plus 4. So I have 3x plus 4 squared plus 6x minus 4 times, again, 3x plus 4, and I have here equals 4. So I've taken the first equation, made y the subject, substituted y instead of y, uh, 3x plus 4 instead of y in the second equation, and then I, I can solve this. Now I have an equation just with x's, which is I'm able to solve now. Now I could have made x a subject as well. I could have, if I made x a subject in this case, I would have got 3x, equals y minus 4, in which case x would be y minus 4 over 3. And then I could have substituted instead of x, y minus 4 over 3, but that's a lot more hassle because you've got to deal with fractions. So it's easier to choose the, the letter which has a coefficient of 1 if, if it exists. Um, to make that the subject, it just makes your working a bit easier. You don't have to deal with fractions. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to um, just simplify and, you know, and solve this equation here. So I've got x squared plus. Now this is a bracket which I can expand using the pattern. I remember it means 3x plus 4 times 3x plus 4. It doesn't mean that you just square everything inside here. No, it, it means 3x plus 4 times 3x plus 4. So when you expand this using the pattern, you're going to square the first term, which gives you 9x squared. Don't forget to, to square both the letter and the number. And then you're going to have the middle term, okay, which is going to be positive. And you're going to have 3x times 4, which is 12x, and then you double it, which gives you 24x. And then you square the last term, which is 4, which gives you 16. And you've got plus 6x minus 4 times 3x, which is minus 12x. And minus 4 times 4, which is negative 16, equals 4. Now we can combine the like terms. You've got x squared plus 9x squared, which is 10x squared, 24x plus 6x, which is 30x minus 12x which is 18x and we got 16 minus 16 which is 0 and then you got the 4 which if you subtract 4 to make it say equal 0 on the other side you end up with your equation here now I need to solve this equation for x now uh, to make life easy you can see that 2 is a common factor so I can actually divide both sides of this equation by 2 in which case I get 5x squared plus 9x minus 2 equals 0. Now this is a place where many students lose marks because many students, they just go straight for the calculator and in their calculator, they take, um, they go to the equation mode. So they go to menu, no, no, they go to shift menu, sorry. They go to menu, then they go to the equation mode, which is over here. And then they say, okay, it's a polynomial, and it's uh, degree 2 because it's quadratic. And then they put in the value of 5, and they press equals, and then 9, and then equals, and then negative 2, 
and then equals and they press equals and it gives you one fifth so they they write some of them they write this that this is how they do it and this is they they want to they want to make out to the examiner that they've factorized and this is one of the things that some students do they say uh, x minus one fifth that's the first answer you see okay and then they press equals again and x plus two equals zero and they say x equals one fifth and x equals minus two some people do that some people just they just write this the answers straight away okay um some people write this first um but the thing is if you do this you're going to lose marks you're going to lose two marks altogether one in the final answer and one at this stage here they want to see how you actually got your answers they don't want to just see the answers here okay it's very especially in p1 they're very strict about this so you have to show that you factorize to give this now if you write x minus one fifth and x plus two equals zero that's not showing that you factorize this at all because when you expand that you don't get this at all okay you get something which is this is actually five times as big as this right so you don't get this at all so that's something that you have to be very careful if you want to show that you factorize first of all the best thing for you to do is to actually factorize okay and to factorize this there's many different methods you could just uh, use guess and check you could split the middle term you could use the window method which is the same as splitting the middle term it's just a more visual style so i'll just show you how to do this so i'm going to write down 5x squared in the top left and minus 2 on the bottom right okay so the first the x squared term and the number term top left bottom right and then you multiply them together that gives you minus 10x squared so you've got to find two numbers that multiply the two numbers here must also multiply to give you negative 10x squared and they must add to give you the plus 9x so two numbers multiply to give you a negative number one is positive one is negative and if they multiply to give you 10 and they add to give you 9 it must be 10 and 1 so it must be plus 10x and minus x and then you can take out a common factor for example from these two the common factor is x and then I can say x times something gives me 5x squared, well that's 5x. x times something gives me minus x, that's a minus 1. 5x times something gives me plus 10x, which is plus 2. That's going to give me um, 5x minus 1 times x plus 2 equals 0. So here we have 5x minus 1 equals 0, and x plus 2 equals 0. So x equals 1 fifth and x equals negative 2 okay so here you've shown that you factorized okay and you have shown that this what you factorized actually equals what you start with okay if you expand this you'll get that so this was how you get the four marks for this question you could have also used a quadratic formula okay which is not necessary if you can factorize but what you don't do is you don't just quote it so there's another place where people lose marks. They will quote the formula and then they'll say x equals one fifth and x equals minus two. That won't gain you any marks for the solution of this equation, or for finding the values of x. Okay, you won't get the mark, the method mark for this because uh, you haven't shown how you use the quadratic formula. So quoting the quadratic formula is fine, but if you didn't quote it and you just wrote down x equals minus b, so here b is nine, so minus nine plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 9 squared, minus 4 times 5 times minus 2, all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 5. If you wrote this down and then you wrote x equals 1 fifth and x equals minus 2, you will get the marks because you've shown the method of uh, solving this quadratic equation. You could also complete the square if you wanted to and sh you know get the solutions. As long as you show a method of solving the quadratic equation, which is a valid method, then you will get the marks for this question. But, you know, uh, using the quadratic formula, I wouldn't really do it in this unless I really got stuck uh, because, uh, you know, it's, it's not necessary. You can factorize this factorizes quite easily. So we've got the solutions. Now, the other mistake that people make in this in a question like this is they don't go on to find the values of y. They think they've got the two, two solutions and then that's it. No, we've got to find the values of y to solve a, a qu equation simultaneously. You've got to find the value of x and y, which satisfies both the equations. So now we've got to find what y is. So when x equals minus 2, we know that we know already that y equals uh, 3x. Was it minus 4? No, 3x plus 4. So when x equals minus 2, we can say y equals 
3 times minus 2 plus 4, which is minus 6 plus 4, which is minus, um, minus 2. So when x equals minus 2, y is equal to minus 2 as well. And when x is equal to 1 fifth, okay, when x is equal to 1 fifth, you got y equals 3 times 1 fifth plus 4, which is 3 fifths plus 4, which is 23 over 5, because this is 20 over 5, so 23 over 5. So we've got our answers when x equals minus 2, y equals minus 2, and when x equals 1 fifth, y equals 23 over 5. And there are the solutions to this question. Okay, so don't go forget to go on to find what y is. That's a common mistake. And when you factorize this, show a proper method of factorizing. Okay, if you were going to use the cheat method where you just go to the calculator, the least you could do is start with this last line here. Okay, leave some space, leave a couple of lines before it, write x equals one fifth, x equals minus two, and work backwards. This is the same as, you know, multiply by five and take away one, five x minus one equals zero and x plus 2 equals 0, and then write those in the brackets. Don't write it as x minus, um, x minus 1 fifth times x plus 2. That gives it away that you have used your calculator, and you should be comfortable with factorizing anyway um, at this stage. Okay, so that's the answer for question number 4. And um, other questions to do with um, this, or from this paper of... June, October 2020 will be found in the playlist that should appear over here. Other questions that are dealing with um, this topic of equations and inequalities will go in this playlist over here and you'll find other questions in, in the playlist there and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe icon in the middle of the screen which should appear. On the top of the page you should have seen a card which takes you to another P1 paper that you might be interested in watching. Thank you for listening and watching.